Good day, fellow disciple of Jesus. So grateful you can join us for prayer today. Let's take a deep breath and we'll have our opening chants. Lord, open our lips together and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is our refuge and our strength. O come, let us worship. The Jubilate, please sing along with me, or hum. Jubilate Deo. Jubilate Deo, Alleluia, Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. God himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. And so together we sing, Jubilate Deo, Jubilate Deo, Alleluia, Alleluia. Psalm 41 appointed for today, in it the psalmist prays for healing from their sick bed. As I prepared, though, I noticed quite a difference between the Jewish translation of Psalm 41 and the NIV NRSV translations that we usually use. In the Jewish translation, the psalm is a straight prayer for healing of body and also deliverance from opposing foes. In the NRSV NIV, it could seem, as the psalm unpacks from the first verse, that God's protection of the poor and God's deliverance is um, a reward for those who have mercy upon the poor. Very interesting, not a huge difference, but um, always good if you can find one to find a Jewish translation of the Old Testament. Very thought-provoking often. Psalm 41, using the NRSV. Happy are those who consider the poor. The Lord delivers them in the day of trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. They are called happy in the land. You do not give them up to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed, in their illness. You heal all their infirmities. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies wonder in malice when I will die and my name perish. And when they come to see me, they utter empty words while their hearts gather mischief. When they go out, they tell it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They think that a deadly thing has fastened on me, that I will not rise again from where I lie. Even my bosom friend in whom I trusted, who ate of my bread, has lifted the heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you are pleased with me, because my enemy has not triumphed over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity, and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and Amen. Let us pray. Remember us, gracious God, when we are lonely and depressed, and support us in the dark night of grief and despair. For your love is faithful, and you do not forget your broken ones. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We will take up our reading of 1 Samuel, starting in chapter 24, verses 1 to 22. We missed a couple of chapters over the weekend. Those chapters concern David as a fugitive from Saul. 1 Samuel chapter 24. 
When Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men of all Israel and went to look for David and his men in the direction of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds beside the road where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. The men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you will do to him as it seems good to you. Then David went and stealthily cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. Afterward, David was stricken to the heart because he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to raise my hand against him, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David scolded his men severely and did not permit them to attack Saul. Then Saul got up and left the cave and went on his way. Afterwards, David also rose up and went out of the cave and called after Saul, My Lord the King. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of those who say, David seeks to do you harm? This very day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hand in the cave, and some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not raise my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak is in my hand. For by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong or treason in my hands. I have not sinned against you, though you are hunting me to take my life. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the ancient proverb says, out of the wicked comes forth wickedness. But my hand shall not be against you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A single flea? May the Lord therefore be judge and give sentence between me and you. May he see to it and plead my cause and vindicate me against you. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. Today you have explained how you have dealt well with me, in that you did not kill me when the Lord put me into your hands. For who has ever found an enemy and sent the enemy safely away? So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. Now I know that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Swear to me, therefore, by the Lord, that you will not cut off my descendants after me, and that you will not wipe out my name from my father's house. So David swore this to Saul. Then Saul went home. But David and his men went up to the stronghold. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Two things of note here to me. David waits patiently and respectfully for the Lord to elevate him to the promised kingship. He does not take action to fulfill the promises of God himself, unlike, for example, Abraham and Jacob. And secondly, David proves that he is not in rebellion against King Saul. This confirms to the king that David will indeed take the kingship from him one day, but he gets from David a promise not to seek revenge against his whole household when he goes. As we shall see, David is true to his word. Now to Acts chapter 13, verses 44 to 52. In the over the weekend readings, Paul and his companions have uh, departed from Cyprus and have landed on the coast of what is today south-central Turkey. They land on the coast at Perga and head inland to a city called Antioch, where Paul preaches to a gathering of Jews in a synagogue. That sermon makes up most of chapter 13, but we pick up at verse 44. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. 
But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and blaspheming. They contradicted what was spoken by Paul. Then both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken first to you, since you reject it and judge yourselves to be unworthy of eternal life. We are now turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, And here Paul quotes from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6, I have set you to be a light for the Gentiles, so that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and praised the word of the Lord. And as many as had been destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread throughout the region. But the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the city and stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their region. So they shook the dust off their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we see a rejection of the gospel by some of the Jewish listeners and a joyful reception by some of the Gentile hearers. May we, after many years of our journey together with Christ, continue to be zealous to hear the good news. Holy Spirit, be our helper. Now as we turn to our intercessions, many people's needs press upon our daily lives and fill our daily news. That we may respond as neighbors, let us ask the Lord for help, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to be neighbors to strangers, to people of every land and tongue and culture. Help us to be neighbors to all who suffer, the lonely, the sick, and the sorrowing. Especially this day we pray for Gabe and Lorraine, Heather and Oakley, Keith and Catherine, Esther and Gerald, Neville and Esther, Brad, Judith, Karen, Sarah, Ruth, Rose, Richard, Ricardo, Shanta, Kavya, and Janine, Allison. And I invite you to pause the recording and pray for any who are on your hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to be neighbors to people of every creed, to Christians and Muslims, Jews and Hindus, Buddhists and atheists. Help us to be neighbors to the enemy the alien, the despised, those with whom we disagree. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to be neighbors to everyone we pass on the road, to salespeople, co-workers, family and passers-by. Help us to be neighbors to one another and thus to share our lives as we share your word and your supper. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you formed us in love. You command us to live in your love. Hear the prayers we make in the name of the Son you sent to dwell among us, the neighbor who is attentive to all our needs, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifying Spirit enfold you this day and all that you love forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Monday, the start of a new week in God's amazing grace.